People on edge. How do you know if the food in your fridge right now is safe? Here with more information on the recent cantaloupe recall and listeria outbreak is Andy Crouppen of Brown and Crouppen. Good morning to you, Andy. Good morning to you, too. We appreciate you. You're a man of many hats, and today it's yeah. the listeriosis hat. Right. And that's going to be what I would love to see on you, by the way. Uh, what is listeriosis? I'm not even sure I know. You know, it, it's funny. Um, about a month ago, or maybe shortly before the listeria outbreak, I was joking. I, I guess I can reveal to you my wife is expecting. So, well, congratulations, yeah. by the way. So, so I'm joking. You, the, they tell you to avoid lunch meat because yeah. of listeria. And yep. I'm joking. You know, really, with listeria, telling you not to eat lunch meat is kind of like telling you not to go to the baseball game when you're pregnant because you might get hit in the stomach with a foul ball. That's how rare it is. The odds are And then slim. listeria outbreak. So you're the one. You're the one that started this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I had never heard of it. Most people right. haven't. It, it's a, it's a food-borne bacteria. Um, it can be very serious. It can lead to listeriosis, which can be fatal. 25% of people, if you leave it untreated and don't get some antibiotics, can actually die from it. It generally affects uh, the elderly, the very young, uh, pregnant women or people with a compromised immune system. You'll get kind of flu-like symptoms. Uh, the unusual thing about it, other than nobody's ever heard of it, now it's everywhere, uh, is that it can, it can incubate in your, in your system for almost three weeks. So you could be exposed today and then, you know, come you right. know, Thanksgiving time, you're starting to get flu-like symptoms and need to go to the doctor. Call if you have this kind of stuff. Any sort of flu-like symptoms, you think you may have been exposed, just err on the side of calling your doctor because it can be very serious and lead to meningitis. I think that's one of the worrisome sort of uncertain parts of this story is you're told that everything has been taken off the shelves, the infected fruit is gone, and yet there's this lag time between when you were exposed to it and when you might exhibit the symptoms. So who knows how much longer we're going to go. Hard to say. Yeah. It, it, you know, you could avoid the specific cantaloupes. You, you know, after the recall, it was uh, Jensen Farms, I think, from Colorado. You can avoid those to make sure, at least with cantaloupe, sure. uh, that you're getting the right stuff and not getting sick. But it's tough. You know, the, the food production in this country has been so consolidated into, you know, one plant making three quarters of the food for the country off. And that's why you see all these foodborne illness outbreaks lately. So, you know, just keep up. Join the FDA has a food alert um, email that they'll send out that you can register for on their website. That's sometimes helpful. But just stay on top of it. That, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to I was going to pose this question to you. Is it perception or is it reality that we seem to be having more and more of these as time goes by? And I suppose if we're kind of centralizing the factories that are processing this food, maybe it's not perception. This is happening more often, maybe. I think it's that plus. We all spend so much more time online, which consolidates also information. Right. I think we just have so much more access to it that in 1982, uh, you know, these things happened all the time, I'm sure. It just, you know, there was no way to publicize it sure. instantly to the world. Foodborne illnesses and legal claims. You don't hear those two things in the same sentence very often. Is there a no. reason for that? Uh, yeah, because generally most of the time the, the illness um, is relatively minor. Maybe a trip to the emergency room at best, but most food poisoning is minor. So, you know, with any legal claim, there have to be injuries in order to pursue a claim. And, and if there's just maybe a, one quick trip to the emergency room, right. it's probably not, you're going to pay more in, in legal fees than you will in, in recovery, it's a good receive point. and recover. Sure. Yeah. Good conversation. If you have a legal question for Brown and Crouppen, you can email us at greatday at KMOV.